So if superstitions are starting to have a negative impact on your life, then the Speakmans are here to help. Morning, guys. Hi, guys. Good, Good morning. morning. Hi. Morning. Hi. Right, we've got people who need help here. And we've got Nikki, first of all. Hi, Nikki. Hi, morning. Good morning. Hi, Hi there. Uh, very well, thank you. Uh, yes. But there's part of you that isn't. Yes, there is. Um, my issue is with magpies. Okay. Um, I can't tell you when it began, but um, it's really impacted on my life. Usually when I'm out in the car and if I see them on a specific journey, if I just see one on its own, um, then I just assume something bad is going to either happen that day or subsequently after. Yeah, and it's a, a really common thing. Really common. Yeah, I've got to be honest, I'm going to admit, I used to have the, the magpie thing as well, but I managed to overcome either. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so the thing is, we there's a psycho psychological phenomenon that we have called confirmation bias. And basically, people are more likely to see things that fit in with their worldview or the world events. So if you believe that, you will, you will likely see more magpies. Yeah, but the way to overcome it is actually with knowledge, really. And that's what really helped me as well. And that's understanding the origin uh, of this thing about magpies and why do we think that way. And uh, literally, it comes from uh, beliefs of uh, 1777, there was a poem, a children's poem that probably we all know from the TV show um, some years ago called Magpie. And, and in essence, it was this kind of one for sorrow, two, but, for, joy. Uh, two for joy. However, what, what it actually, so it relates to a rhyme, first of all. And the reason that one was sorrowful is that uh, magpies are believed to mate for life. They only live around three years, but when they, they meet their partner, they're together forever. So if anything happens to that partner, then uh, that's sort of sorrowful for, for the magpie. So what, we, uh, what we'd like you to consider now moving forward is that when you see that magpie, instead of worrying about yourself, realise that the sadness should relate to that poor magpie who is most likely to be on, on its own. Oh, that's but so it's good. A, it is. I mean, remember Magpie, the TV thing. One for sorrow, two for joy, yeah. three for girl, four for a bar, exactly. boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. That's what... Well that's you what that went in, didn't it? Why is that still yeah. in my head? Um, okay. My dad always yeah. used to say, morning, Mr Magpie, and that was... that was It It, it uh, sort of wiped everything yeah, out. It was good luck thing. for the whole day. Morning, Mr Magpie. And so long as you said good yeah. morning, everything was OK. But what you just said there makes yeah. total see, sense. It's sad for the magpie, Nicky, yeah. not, not for you. Absolutely. It is sad for the magpie. And that's the thing with all superstitions. They come from cultural habits as opposed to conscious beliefs, yeah. which is why they get passed on. And how does that help a little bit, Nikki? It does, and I try to reason with myself. It's only a bird at the end of the day, but, um, but, but sometimes when I do see one on its own, something bad does happen. Well, now you've got to feel sorry for the magpie. Mm. Yeah, Because that's a coincidence, and the poor magpie is on its own. Aww. Oh yeah, I think, I think I need to turn it around a little bit. All right, <laughs> you then. can do thanks, it. Nikki. And, and Thank the, you. And, thanks, and Nikki. the thing Thank is, you, you, look, you, you are looking for things to go wrong. See you, Nikki. Yeah, Bye. that's yeah. true. That's a good point. Right, we've got Colleen on the line now. Hi, Colleen. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Now, this is a difficult one for you to say because by the nature of saying it, that is part of your superstition that you don't like. So can you say the words or do you want me to do it? No, you can say it and then I can say yeah, you okay. can say it. Well, There's you've got this superstition from your parents. You can't say or hear the words monkey or rat. If you hear no. the words, you have to whisper, which I imagine is what you're doing now, good luck under your yes. breath to cancel out the bad luck. Why have you got this from your parents? What did they tell you? I don't, they've never actually said anything. They've obviously got it from one set of parents on one side of the family and it's carried on to us and I've passed it down to my daughters now and my children. So, um, so you have no idea, you know, sort of where it started no. from them or what the origins of this thing are? No, and I've got no dislike to the creatures. It's just actually the name of them. OK. And so right. you want to stop this, though, because it's annoying, it's causing you problems? Yeah, it, yeah, it is annoying. It's like if I'm not listening, you know, if you can be on a bus or something and not listening to anything around you, but if that word is mentioned, it's like zoomed in. Yeah. I can just automatically, you know, join that conversation because I've heard that word. It's and got that control it doesn't control. need to have. All right, Speakman's over to you. Again, this falls into the fact that it's a cultural habit and you've learned this from your parents just in the same way that you've learned your, your accent from your parents. And I want you to consider that you can change anything. And parents, the best parents on the planet, still get things wrong because there's no handbook. So this isn't your thing. That's what I want you to consider. In relation to the problem that you've got with the creature that sounds like hats, uh, the thing with that 
is that a lot of people believe that that was as a result of the Black Plague because they believe that that creature spread the Black Plague and it killed uh, so many people in the Middle Ages. Yeah, but I think that the way forward for you really is if you can have a chat with your parents or your family and find out where the origins of that comes from, then you can start to apply common sense to it and you can start to challenge it. Also to realise that, you know, what are superstitions? And, and literally, they have been passed on from our ancestors when they didn't have control over health, they didn't have medicine, they didn't have science, and they would explain uh, the natural things that would happen, you know, like natural disasters, as being supernatural. So the only reassurance that they could get would be to believe in superstitions. And that's exactly what, what we all do when we have a superstition, is it's, it's kind of uh, to help us to feel a little bit better. But uh, what you can try to do is look at all the things, that, things, days when things have gone wrong, and things will go wrong for everybody. But consider how was the animal that rhymes with hat and the other one that rhymes with funky have anything to do with that thing going wrong? Because in that day, what you're looking for is that evidence of those days when something went wrong and those two words weren't even attributed. And, and finally, try doing something different. So before you do whatever you need to do to cancel it out, then uh, you hear the word and you go, but luckily, uh, for example, but luckily, I know actually that that's not true. It doesn't belong to me. And it's something that's been passed down. Uh, and it, but it isn't actually something that's true. Hmm. And, uh, and also, you, you always state, and I think it's important to say, that we are only born with two fears. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so it's a fear of loud noises and a fear of falling. That is it. Everything else is literally learned. And I think that when we're children as well, we are encouraged to develop our imagination. And when we're children, we often might feel out of control with certain things that are going on in life. So we default to believing in these little superstitions that just give us a little bit of help us to feel a little bit better in the moment. Well, Kerry got in touch and said, uh, even numbers rule my life. The volume of the TV, the heating, the radio has to be an even number and if I chop anything up, knock on the door, clap my hands, it has to be an even amount. How can I stop this ruling my life? Well, that we could be bordering on OCD behaviour there, potentially. Uh, but there's a marketing research study that actually showed that people are more attracted to brands that have even numbers than odd numbers. So that could have a bearing on things. Yeah, and uh, another thing to, to consider to sort of start to, again, challenge that belief of, about even numbers is consider all the people that are in your life that you really love, that you care about, who were born on a, a day that's an odd number, so that you can appreciate, actually, that odd numbers are good as well, so you can start to balance it out. But also, if you love someone, uh, you wouldn't love them when they were 20 and then not love them when they were 21 because that's an odd number and then start loving them again when they're 22. So just consider uh, real world uh, evidence to compare that all numbers are the same. However, like Nick said, just a little point, if it is a bit sort of on the sort of starting to be a bit of an obsessive compulsive disorder, then that is something that you should really seek help for because usually that would stem from an origin in the past where something, uh, it might have been some sort of a trauma or challenge in childhood and you've used this behaviour to As to a form help. of control. Yeah, and, and, and to help you to feel a little bit better, so that needs to be addressed. Very quickly, Pauline says, I'm very superstitious about a lot of things, going out the same door you came in, not cutting your nails on Fridays and Sundays and not having a pack of playing cards in the house. How? Because she wants to forget about them? How can she forget them? What she's got to do is change her focus. We have uh, a mechanism in our brain, uh, which is our sensory gateway to information that we let in, because it can only allow so much information in. So if she starts changing her focus from those things that may cause a problem to things that are going great in her life, that will shift her focus too, and therefore she'll see more things that are going right than things that are going yeah, wrong. So start your day with gratitude. Think about all the things that you're grateful for, and at the end of the day, concentrate on all the things that were great about that day, and it'll help to shift your focus. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you to so see you much. both. Thank you.